Welcome to Fritz and Friends. I'm Cheryl Fritz coming to you on 1320 WILS and streaming live on 1320 WILS.com. Joining me on the phone now, Tom Talutke, president of the Michigan Corrections Organization. Good evening, Tom. How are you? Real good, Cheryl. What about yourself? I'm doing well uh, leading into a holiday weekend. Uh, I think the roads are probably showing that to you today, aren't they? Absolutely. <laughs> Construction everywhere. It's unbelievable. Well, there you go. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about, and we, we've, we've touched on this in conversations we've had before, Tom, uh, folks who work in the Michigan prison system um, have, are saying that Governor Snyder's budget for next year uh, that includes more than $70 million in cuts for the Department of Corrections is targeting them unfairly, and, and it increases the risks of, of their jobs, which are already dangerous. Uh, tell me what this is looking like for your organization at this point. Well, you know, Cheryl, the last couple of weeks, uh, I've been in the trenches almost every day. I've been at a different facility. I've went through the entire Upper Peninsula. I've been in some prisons in Ionia. And I've been around this business for 27 years, and I have never, ever, ever seen the morale uh, lower than what it is now. I mean, uh, correction officers here in Michigan, they're they're the most highly trained in the nation. Uh, Our training here is second to none. And then you have your boss come in and say, hey, uh, uh, we know you do a challenging job, but guess what? We're going to ask you to take uh, uh, 50% of the concessionary hit, even though we're only 16% of the state employee workforce. It's uh, unfair. Like I said, the morale is very low, and quite honestly, they're mad as Man, it's tech. <laughs> and I appreciate the self-editing there, Tom. Yes. <laughs> uh, what I'm what I'm wondering is what it, what it feels like. Uh, uh, there's 145 million dollars in total, uh, approximately in in state employee concessions, and the corrections officers are asking are being asked to give about 72 million in that. The, does the proportion seem unfair? Oh, it's very unfair. I mean, you don't need a calculator to figure that out. I mean, uh, uh, we're being hit strictly because of the Department of Corrections as a target, but uh, we're only half the amount of employees in the Department of Corrections. So it's not everybody in the Department of Corrections that's being asked for this uh, lopsided sacrifice. It's strictly the officers, and it's uh, the officers, as you all know, that protect the public from the... uh, Uh, criminals here in Michigan, you know, they have to work on Christmas Day when everybody's home uh, enjoying holidays. They have to work second shift. They have to work third shift. Uh, There's a tremendous amount of mandatory overtime going on right now. Uh, Some prisons are as high as uh, 30 officers short. And uh, you you know what? Uh, It's dangerous in there. It's more dangerous now than it's ever been. Um, It's unbelievable to us here at MCO that... uh, We've had now, since December, we've had warning shots fired at, at on seven different occasions. And just last night at a prison in the Upper Peninsula, there was yet another warning shot fired. There was a fight uh, in, the, in the yard, and uh, prisoners were just beating the heck out of one prisoner. And uh, they had to fire a warning shot to, to have it stop. It's like it's out of control. Now, now, to put that in perspective, what what is normal for warning shots within the correction system in Michigan? Uh, usually you have a warning shot to disperse the prisoners. Uh, most times uh, somebody's life's got to be in jeopardy, whether it's not necessarily uh, always an employee or a correction officer, but uh, uh, it's also done to protect the well-being of a prisoner, and that was definitely the case officers were responding to the, this incident last night is my understanding and uh, there were several other prisoners that prisoners that gathered around to watch the fight and uh, the officer that fired the warning shot was uh, actually doing that to protect this prisoner they were beating the heck out of him and uh, he thought that there was a possibility quite honestly that these prisoners could kill him and the warning shot uh, of course, stop the activity. Now, you said there have been seven since December. Uh, is that high? Oh, um, I mean, you know what? We've gone years without a warning shot being fired. Um, it's probably pretty common for every two or three years you hear of uh, an officer in the tower having to fire a warning shot. And now here, uh, in the, since December, we've had seven. That's unheard of in my 27-year career. And uh, like we spoke on previous occasions, we attribute it to the classification system. And, and explain the classification system, the, the changing of assignments. Is that what you're referring to? 
Nope, not the changing of okay. assignment. Prisoner classifications. Um, a lot of high-level beds were taken offline when Standish was closed. Elgin Max was downgraded from a five to a four, and prisoners are being classified at a lower level, and they're not ready for that. Um, they're put into places where they're double bunked. There's less officers. And uh, uh, they're, they're just not ready for that type of environment, Cheryl. Well, and I have to wonder, too, as you, as you talk about the warning shots again, what the thought that comes to mind is the prisoners have to be noticing fewer and fewer guards. Oh, absolutely. Uh, they sure do. I mean, in fact, uh, we're finding a, like, a tremendous amount of weapons in our lower-level prisons. And when I'm touring, I ask officers, I mean, you you know, some of these officers have worked in a, low, a level one, which is the lowest level, I mean, I ask them, you've been here 20 years. I mean, why? What are prisoners telling you? And prisoners are telling our officers that they're arming themselves because they feel they're in, in jeopardy. There's less officers, and uh, the prisoners that are in Level 1 are not the prisoners that were in Level 1 10 years ago. They're being pushed down into the system because simply there's no high-security beds available. Um, if you take, you know, they took 1,200 level 5 beds offline, those prisoners didn't get paroled. Those 1,200 level 5s went into a level 4. Where do you think the level 4s went? They went into the lower levels, the 2s and the 3s. And where did the 3s and the 2s go? Into the 1s. So it's just a bad situation. And uh, on top of all this happening, they, they're cutting officer assignments and cutting their thinner and thinner. And uh, there's situations and scenarios out there where there's simply nobody left to respond, and it's it's outright dangerous. Well, and the, and the ratio of officers to inmates, um, some of the information I had uh, talked about third shifts with 18 officers and 1,400 inmates to keep an eye on. Absolutely, and that's in a dorm setting. There's no way to lock those prisoners in. They're not in individual cells. They sleep in a... A base setting where there's a, a seven and eight prisoners in a base, so there's no way to secure them. So they have free roam of the prison, other than you telling them they have to stay in their bay. Well, if they decide to, no, I ain't doing it tonight. Just think of those odds. Well, and what comes to mind is is two things, Tom. One is is the the safety of the officers, and frankly, of the prisoners to each other. And then public safety has to come in here at some point. It, you know, it, it does. Public safety, uh, citizens here in Michigan should uh, uh, tune in. They should know what we're dealing with in corrections because uh, um, we just, uh, last year, we had an escape attempt from Ken Ross. Um, more and more of this stuff, uh, as things get uh, uh, more and more hectic inside, it definitely boils over into the public. Why do you think the corrections department was targeted for what you say are out-of-proportion cuts to the department? You know, it's our understanding that it has to do with the general fund, that corrections eats up a large portion of the general fund. Well, if you buy, if you buy that theory, um, quite honestly, uh, correction officers in Michigan aren't the only employees in the Department of Corrections that uh, are, have these general fund dollars. There's another uh, six to 7,000 employees that aren't being touched at the rate correction officers are. Is there, is there anything that could be done about this? I mean, you're traveling around the state with facilities. Uh, they're closing around you. Uh, is, there, is there anything that can be done from your point of view? Yes, yeah, sure. We've gave suggestions. Uh, here in Michigan, um, I'm not sure if you're aware of it or not, uh, our international union just did a study. Here in Michigan, uh, there's the highest uh, in state government supervisor to employee ratio, 6 to 1. Other states are at 10, 11 to 1 supervisors per employee, some as high as 20. Why in this so-called budget crisis does Michigan continue to have one supervisor for every six employees? I think that's outrageous. It's unsustainable. We've given suggestions, and they seem to fall on deaf ears. So we're, we're top-heavy supervisory. Absolutely we are, and, uh, and they don't hesitate to cut officer assignments, but when we bring data, national data, that says there's too many supervisors, they simply set up a committee to look at it. They don't hesitate to just cut officer assignments or set up a committee or have some type of discussion, is this safe or not safe, they just do it. You're not finding avenues uh, to, to bend the right ears, apparently? We're bending anybody's ear that will listen to us, and we've spoken directly to Governor Schneider on some of our concerns. And, and your, what you hear back is? We're going to take a look at it. And that's but nice. In the, but, but in the meantime, our members are out there, and uh, they're in some very, very dangerous situations, and uh, 
quite honestly, uh, I'm getting real tired of getting these calls after hours about officers in the hospital. I've, I've had to go see four or five officers in the hospital here uh, just in the last six or eight months. And, I mean, they were severely beaten. Well, it's, it, we've talked about how dangerous the job is, and that's that's clearly not getting better. And um, as, as we just mentioned, as inmates are aware that there's fewer out there, I, I'm concerned that it's going to be even more dangerous. We're very concerned. Our members are very concerned. And it seems like a lot of our suggestions and ideas are falling upon deaf ears at this point. Well, Tom, I, I appreciate, again, you, you uh, filling us in on the very latest. We'll continue to follow this um, as, as, as the budget process moves forward and, and see if any movement can be made. Thank you, Tom, for your time this afternoon. Yep, have a good day. You as well. Tom yep. Talutke, president of the Michigan Corrections Organization, will be back with more Fritz and Friends on 1320 WILS right after this.